Good morning, everyone. Um, I have been asked uh, to put uh, your job in a comparative uh, perspective um, to see, you know, to what extent, you know, there are similar trends and patterns, you know, in other uh, European European countries uh, in terms of the sources and the consequences of uh, polarization in, in, in Georgia. Well, as it has been mentioned, uh, Georgia is one of the most uh, polarized uh, democracies in, uh, in Europe, certainly. But uh, fortunately, or fortunately, in Georgia is a special country in many aspects, you know, it is not so special in this uh, sense, because there are other countries, other European countries, especially recently, that have become very uh, polarized. You know, we have, for example, the example of uh, Hungary, we have also more recently, you know, Poland. I'm sure you know you have read in the news about you know the different types of demonstration about you know reforms, the constitutional uh, court, uh, abortion law, etc., etc. But also my own country, Spain, especially you know after it was hit you know by uh, the economic crisis in uh, 2000, 2008. So all these countries have these problems of uh, polarization. So my idea was to look at the different you know, sources, determinants of uh, polarization in all these, uh, these countries. Some of them have been said, so I will go you know, uh, very quickly over, over them. Uh, one basically uh, source of polarization that I discovered in my research is basically you know, the type of government and problems that might arise with uh, direct election of, of the president. Also, you know, the type of electoral system a certain country has and a heavy com majoritarian component of uh, certain electoral systems, like the one the current mixed electoral system in, in the country. Also, in terms of you know the personalization of politics and the weak level of party institutionalization, and in this context, Georgia is rather exceptional because if you think of all the consolidated democracies, think about Germany, think about the Netherlands, think about the UK. You could summarize the history of their party politics with a couple of party names that have been stable over time. Even in new democracies like Spain, Hungary, you have two, three, four parties that have been there, you know, from the very beginning. However, you know, Georgia, you know, it's a bit like you know a Sergio Leone's movie. You know, it's more about personalities than about parties. You could summarize more than 25 years of democratic politics in this country with just four names, you know, Ivanishvili, Svili, Severnace, and Amseburdia. Sorry if I didn't pronounce the names very, very well. So, you know, I mean, this is certainly, I think, problematic. And in this sense, you know, Georgia is rather specific. We also have the problem of inequality, that's being addressed, so we will not go into that. And certainly, you know, the problem of trust. But I would like to focus my presentation, if you allow me, in a topic that has been very, very, you know, uh, important, sorry, in the last, you know, month, and that is of constitutional reform. Because if I have found, you know, uh, something interesting in this comparative study of these four democracies, European democracies, is that all of them have been characterized by concerns about the current constitutional framework. There has been an attempt in all of them, or there are you know, different uh, activities and initiatives, to change the constitution in all of these countries. I will not talk so much about Georgia. You know a lot about it. It was on TV every single day I was here, so you know, you know this. But you, know, you have, for example, the case of Hungary. Hungary, in this sense, you know, is similar to Georgia. You know, a government, Georgia, what is happening in Georgia, a government, single party government with a super majority in parliament that changed the constitution totally in order to adapt the 16 institutions at that time into their, you know, defending their interest and breaking what has been a very successful and negotiated transition, increasing, you know, polarization in society. We have the case of Poland. You know, and the law and justice, you know, conservative party led by you know Jarosław Kaczynski. The difference here is that you know they don't have a super minority government, but they have been questioning from the very first moment of their existence, you know, the uh, constitution of 1997, 
because most of the Iranqis parties, which for the political spectrum they belong to, were not present at that moment. So they are criticizing that there was no consensus. And we have also the recent case of Spain. Here, you know, the story is a bit different. It's not so much the polarization between the government and the opposition that you have in Georgia, Hungary, and Poland, but between the traditional parties and these new populist parties. You know, Unidos Podemos, you know, led by Pablo Iglesias, who are questioning that the negotiation transition that we have in the end of the 70s was done basically by the children of Franco. You know, and therefore, you know, they are not really represented. You know, these are new generation. You know, they want to and you know, the uh, previous uh, regime. So, you know, constitutional reform becomes a clear source of polarization. These attempts, this lapse of consensus, compromise, trying to change you know, the legal framework that has been, in many cases, negotiated and agreed. So, in terms of recommendations and on the specificity of this constitutional reform problem, I would say, first of all, what we need it's a long-term perspective. It's not about you know, short-term you know, initiatives. It's not about achieving something on the short term. You know. Some parties may want to get rid of the president. It's a short term. We have to think about which type of institution, which type of constitutional framework, which type of environment would allow us to really eliminate or reduce the problem of polarization and progress in the institutionalization of the party system in the stability and strengthening of the political parties, you know, in the building of consensus compromise. In fact, compromise is another important thing, because if not, there will be changes of the constitution again and again. You know, I mean, Georgia, Georgia has changed the constitution so many times since 1985. You know, the electoral system has been changed almost before every single election. You know, there is no way that politicians themselves, but most important voters, could adapt to the changes. You know, there are many studies that prove for a certain institution to work, you need to keep it. It may be not as good, but because of time, you know, their negative effects may be reduced. Fairly expertise. In my two-day experience in this country, I have realized that most Georgians, in many cases, talk with their hearts and not with their brains. I think that it's important to bring together national and international expertise, who obviously you know, could be less influenced by the political environment and be more objective, and secondly, interdisciplinary. You know, lawyers, constitutionalists, you know, political science, who have a more comparative uh, you know, uh, objective perspective. And finally, I'm bringing together these three previous recommendations, but we basically need extra time. Four months to change a constitution is not enough. Think about the example of Italy. They had more than four months to discuss the referendum. Imagine how many time before to prepare the proposal of constitutional change. So these are basically my four important recommendations on this important topic. Thank you very much for your attention. So on this idea of polarization, I think perhaps you know, you know, we were we didn't make it very clear, and this is a presentation of uh, what we are talking when we talk about polarization. And there were a couple of innovations about uh, this, you know. Um, in Georgia, there is not what is called you know, ideological polarization. What we have is political polarization, or using uh, my uh, close colleague at uh, Central European University, Sholten Yeti concept. Populist polarization. Wouldn't you say that you know here the polarization is a combination of intense aggressive competition between party blocks, the concomitant rejection of the division of power, the focus of the question of who the people are, and the central role of relatively stable and strong parties? This is the type of polarization we have in this country. This is the type of polarization we have in Hungary. This is the type of polarization we have in Spain. This is the type of polarization we have in Poland and in many other countries. And this is when we talk about polarization. Ideas, of course ideas can lead to polarization, but this is to the other type of polarization, ideological polarization. And as scholars, we know that ideological polarization can be also negative for different reasons than this type of polarization. 
So I think it is important that we take it to consideration. This time, there are different types of polarization, and you know we are talking more about this kind of political populist polarization, not so much about radicalization or extremist opposition of different uh, blocs. Also, I would like to, you know, I agree with what has been said about the involvement of international organizations. I think that you know what is needed, you know, is more aseptic, objective, less hard, you know, uh, um, driven, you know, approach to uh, a lot of the things that are going on in this country, the constitutional reform, certainly. Um, laws regarding dealing with the past. I mean, you know, it has been uh, mentioned Dostoevsky, you know, the crime and, pun the crime and punishment, you know, approach. But we could also use the Lewis Carroll, you know, Alice in Wonderland, more wrong approach. I'm not in favor of one or the other. I think that once again, we need an objective, comparative, you know, uh, aseptic analysis. But what you need, in my view, and you know, I come from Spain, so we also have to deal with the past, is that you know you don't act as the ostrich that puts you know the head on the hole. You know you need to deal with this once and for all. It will create more polarization, perhaps during one year, two years, when you are dealing with this. But you know most probably it will solve the problem later on, depending, of course, on the on the approach. You know, Dostoevsky, Carroll, or others that you will use. You know, in terms of institutional reform. I don't want to enter into that. We don't have time. What is better, what is not. I have my own uh, perspectives. You can check it on my studies. They are also uh, quoted in the report. But I would say one thing. One of the main problems I see, and I saw it in, in the interventions, is that you think of the institutional change with the current context. You have to think that you know, institutions change the environment. And therefore, if we were to change the electoral system or the uh, election or the type of the election of the president, you say, who represents those who oppose? Well, if you have a proportional system, there will be much more parties representing in parliament, representing the other people's view. You know, I think it's a mistake to think in the new institutional environment with the current situation. The institutions will change the environment. And if, if, if it is kept stable, Voters, parties, politicians will adapt to the new institutional environment. You will have a new institutional environment. It will be worse than this one. Depends on the institutions you adopt. But it will be different, certainly uh, different. And also, and this here is more as an expert than, you know, uh, because it was not involved in, you know, uh, treated in this, sorry, in this project. Federalism, which type of, uh, you know, uh, state, the nature of the state that we should. You know, I mean, the thing is that, you have to think when uh, dealing with this uh, issue on which type of federalism you really want to bring in. You want this bringing us together, you know, like you know, United States or Yemen, or keeping us together, Spain, Belgium, Italy. Which type of federalism you want to? Also, you have to be prepared to really go with federalism and guarantee autonomy to certain regions. Is the public, the politicians, prepared to do this? bringing them in and having them represented in power, most probably also change the institutions and adopt a bicameralism system with the Senate, change their, their electoral system, which type of electoral system for each of the chambers. So it's a much more complicated issue that only that would require certainly more than from